District of Chetwin public hearing. I call to order and welcome you. I need the adoption of uh, the agenda. So moved. All those in favor? Carried. Explanation and purpose of the public hearing. The public hearing is being convened pursuant to section 464 of the Local Government Act in order to consider the purpose proposed by law. District of Chetland Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1081-2018, Canvas. At the public hearing, any person present who believes that, the, that his or her interest in, prior, in property is, is affected by the proposed bylaw shall be given the opportunity to be heard on the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. However, it is important that all who speak at the meeting restrict his or her remarks to matters contained in the bylaw, and it is my responsibility as chair of this meeting to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. Those of us who wish to speak on the proposed bylaw should, at the appropriate time, direct your address to council by clearly stating your name and address. Then you may give us the benefit of your view concerning the proposed bylaw. Council may, if it, if it so wishes, ask questions. However, the main function of the council is to listen to the views of the public. And it, it is not the function of the council at the public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaws with the individual citizens. Everyone who deems their interest in property to be affected shall be given the opportunity, opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one shall be or sh should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. After the public hearing is concluded, the council may, without further notice, give whatever effect it believes proper to the presentation made at the public hearing. Public, public hearing closing statement. Before closing, okay, good. Okay, thank you. Okay, matter, matters to be discussed. Zoning Amendment 218. So background information. Re re relevant section of existing zone by law number 1035-2016. Correspondence received. Letter received from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure dated October 30th, 2018, stating that the minister has no object objections to zoning amendment by law number 1081-2018. Public presentations and questions. Do I hear any? Maybe if Carol could just give us an exact reason why this is coming. I, I believe I understand it, and uh, it's pretty simple. It's not really changing much except for giving cannabis retail in commercial zone, right? It's more or less what we're doing today. That's right. We're, we're introducing these three uh, definitions, cannabis production facility designated farm use, cannabis, cannabis production facility non-farm use, and cannabis retail because right now the zoning bylaw has no reference to cannabis at all. So this bylaw introduces the definitions and it also permits um, cannabis production facility in the agricultural zone and cannabis retail in the town center commercial zone. Do we, do we have agricultural uh, land reserve in town? Very little. Okay. 
Any questions? Hearing none. Closing statement. Before closing this hearing, I'm going to call three times for any further speakers on any of the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. For, for the first time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representation? Not hearing any. For the second time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representation? Not hearing any. For the third time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representation? There being no further speakers, I declare that the public hearing closed. Thank you very much for your submissions. I would like to adjourn this meeting. Any Second. All those in favor? Okay. So next meeting is for the right? District of Chetwin. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mover for 19th. Yes. Uh, yes, adopting the agenda. Yes, sir. Seconder? No? All those in favor? As we begin our meeting this evening, we reflect on the service we provide to our citizens, and we will endeavor to conduct our business effectively and productively on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Adoption of the agenda. That'd be Laura, seconded by Mel. I would like a uh, mover for, uh, for the minutes of the regular council meeting on, uh, are we going for the 15th or the 5th? 15th motion of October? To motion to receive minutes for October 15th. Sorry. All those in favor? Carried. Ask for a mover for the for the minutes for uh, November fifth. So moved. Is, is it okay if I just explain um, on the at the November fifth meeting we had NDIT on the uh, list of committee appointments, but when after talking to NDIT they told me that. They only needed an appointment for the Northeast Regional Advisory Committee, not, not NDIT, because they appoint their own appointees to that. So it doesn't appear in these minutes for November 5th, just to clarify that. OK, you got that? OK, thanks, Carol. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Okay. So I'd like to introduce the delegation to the delegation, Tyra Monden, for the Visitor Center.
Well, first, let me start by saying congratulations to all of you on your appointments. So I look forward to the next four years, um, potentially working with everybody here. So anyways, this is just a, a short little presentation on the Chetwin Visitor Center for 2018. Um, for some of you, it'll be a, a bit of a review from last year, because some of the things are the same, and then some things we did slightly different. So I'll try, if you have any question at any point in time, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking. So the Chetwin Visitor Center 2018. So as you can see, happy people. Uh, we are in the best job ever because everybody coming in to see us is on holidays, typically having a great time. So it's a, it is a great spot. Or should I be pointing it for it to move? Okay. Maybe it's locked out. Thank you. Oh, I can feel the power in it now. <laughs> okay, here we go. So typically this is what we see, happy visitors. But what I thought I would do is put together a few numbers for you, um, some interesting numbers. So our first little slide here is um, we had over 5,000 visitors between, our, between May and August. So that is our high season month when we have all our staff on board. Uh, and during that time, we had the 5,000 visitors. So what they, um, the numbers end up being is 31.6% were BC residents, 23% were local residents, 15.6% from US or Mexico, 11.2% from Alberta, 9.1% from Europe, 7.5% other Canada, and 2% other. So these are typically the statistics that we collect on our forms from Destination BC. But the nice part about this, too, is we also collect information that lets us know how long they stay in the community. So 33% of these visitors stayed at least one night in the community, which is great for our businesses. So our staff this year, our team was Jillian Newman, Kristen Hart, and Caitlin Pop. So I really want to give um, um, acknowledgement where acknowledgement is due. They were a great team, probably some of the best staff we could have possibly had. Um, Almost a day did not go by that we did not get comments on how good our staff was, the information they give and how they give it. So they were our star performers. So again, for some of you, this might be a bit of a, re a review, but what we have at the visitor center is our free rentals. So you can see we have our summer ones here, the bikes, the sporting equipment, but we also have for the winter our snowshoe um, rentals our poles, and we also have added hockey sticks for once the, the arena is up and going. We have consignment sales. We have our general information. Souvenir product. And once again, we had, did a Take Me Home project that started last year that we continued on bringing visitors into the center. One of the things we did here is that we do have the comforts of home when visitors come in. You can see we've got the couch, we've got the guitar, we've got coffee, free Wi-Fi. The kids can play. There is um, coloring and carving that the kids can do. So this year we decided what kind of ideas can we do to enhance our visitor service and enhance that visitor experience. So our first thing we did was a guest signature wall. So you can see, um, and if you come into the center, it's still there. We're going to keep it for a couple of years so those returning visitors can come and find their names again. Um, but you can see the bottom one there, it says, My Favorite Visitor Center. So this fellow is from France, and he was traveling all the way from Alaska down through Canada. Another hit of the season was our collaborative art center, where we had visitors come in and spend a little bit of time, put a little bit of paint on a canvas, and we recorded their names and where they're from. I can't quite tell from here, but there was one lady from Korea, there's Quenelle, there's um, other Sweden, I think, is on this one. So it was a very collaborative one. We ended up with a lot of art pieces, so it was very well received by our visitors. Another thought we had was, how do we promote Chetwin a little bit more? So we asked Mrs. Pohl's class from Don Titus to come in and paint us some rocks. We put a hashtag on the back. We put our Chetwin Visitor Center on there along with their names, and we tried to keep track of where the rocks went. So some of them went to Alaska, Germany, Scotland, and Australia. But one of the coolest things this year that we found 
was it worked. So I can't read it here, but it says, hey, check one visitor center. I found one of your rocks in Alaska, and I left it on Mount Fuji for the next visitor to find with the hashtag of check one rocks on it. So that was a fun, that was a really great project. This was our first year being on TripAdvisor. We got one review, and if we're going to get one review, this was a great one. It's a five star, so which is really great. So it mentions our free bikes and our rentals, the picnic tables, the barbecue, not to mention all the great information they got from the center. Another initiative this year was a Chet One Healthway map um, that some funding came through for. On the map, there are, the landmarks are all our hotels and motels, so it doesn't matter the distance between each one. We've tracked it so that visitors and locals alike have an easy tracking system throughout town that they want to record how far they're going. So along that way, we did tennis and horseshoes and floats. So we tried to get out in the community, entice people to come and try out our free, pro our free rentals. We did s'mores and bocce in the Don Titus Park. We did freezies and Carver's Row. And all of the map distributions go to all the hotels plus others so that they can be easily accessed by the visitors and by the locals. So here is our um, next page is just a Chetwind Visitor Center stats year over year just so you can see um, how we fall into um, numbers kind of remaining the same. So we've, um, you can see our totals for this year are going to probably match last year's totals which are really nice because we still have November and December to, to get through. Our blue numbers. I've listed on there our roaming. So for those of you that haven't heard about our roaming, it is um, taking our visitation, our services outside of the bricks and mortar, on the streets, um, where events are, um, different local activities where we can actually distribute information to locals and visitors. So those, no those numbers are captured in the blue. We had regional partnerships. So some of our, our partnerships were the regional training where all of the staff get together, typically in Dawson Creek um, from the region for the um, counselor training. And the Peace River community to community poker ride um, where riders leave from each center and tour the region, um, going from visitor center to visitor center. And this year we had 148 riders, which I believe is slowly growing and it's becoming a much bigger event within the region. So to finish off, we've just got a few pictures. We were out for the health blitz. We were picking up garbage. We were at the, um, I can't read it in the black there, the, um, the, lo the, the hockey, maybe, maybe a hockey fan can help me out here. <laughs> um, yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Canada Day, we also had the Shop Local program, which our lucky winner this year was Tyler McMurdo. McMurdo, McMurdo, hopefully I got that right. Um, so he was happy to receive that $560 worth of Chetwin bucks. This other little piece, this picture here, is just, um, it's for everybody's information. So this we have, uh, Chetwin has a time capsule that's to be opened by mayor and council in 2071. So let's not forget that one. Um, this is um, typically one of our typical days, what we would see come into the visitor center, see unique vehicles from all over the world, and happy visitors. One last thing is that, oops, hopefully I didn't go too far. We are the um, delivery organization for Superhost, which was formerly known as Worldhost. So if you're looking for anybody's wishing to um, have quality customer service training, we are the delivery organization for that. I didn't stop much for questions, so if you have any, let me know. <laughs> any questions? Congratulate Tyra on a job well done. Um, I, I've heard nothing but great things about the way you operate the tourism information oh, okay. and your roaming um, thing you're talking about. That's just a highlight. Very mm -hmm. good. Well, thank you. I had a question. Sure. With the numbers that you uh, showed us there, can uh, anyone access that anywhere on the website or? There is, we don't, um, Destination BC has set up a statistics um, data bank is what it is. Mm -hmm. So if there were at any point in time, um, we have access to, I have access to that. Mm -hmm. And it is public knowledge. So if you were looking for any kind of statistical reports, I can definitely grab that for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? 
Okay, thank you very much. Yep. So I need a mover for District of Chatham Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1081. 2018 require a third reading. I would make that motion to move for third reading. Second. Mel? Second. Discussion? I just want to clarify that this is what we had the public hearing for, was just the changing of adding that into. Okay, I just want to clarify. So I uh, hear no discussion. Thank you, Laura. Uh, all those in favor? Carrie. Opportunity for public hearing input. District of Chetland Business License Regular Amendment Bylaw 1084, 2018 requires adoption. I need a mover. Carol? Oh. Okay. I'll get you the information right now. Okay, business license and regulation amendment bylaws 1084, 2018. This portion of our regular council meeting is set aside for, to allow for public comment on the proposed business licensing, licensing and regulations amendment bylaw number 1084, 2018. This is not a formal public hearing process, but rather an informal process. I will, however, ask, for, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their name and residential or business address and then provide council with, and then provide council with their comments. I will now ask if there are any presentations either in favor of or in opposition to the proposed bylaw. Any comments? Hearing no further comments, I declare this public procedure concluded. So, I would need a seconder, or a mover. Okay, seconder. Okay, Josh. Okay, all those in favor? Gary. The regional uh, uh, committee reports. Is there any council reports that we deal with? Seeing none. The mayor's report. The mayor's report. Uh, I have two reports in there, and one I would like to make as a late uh, entrance to our agenda. It's CR three A. We have three R three, a uh, three R three, yes, and uh, we're we've got three R uh, C R three A. Excuse me. And 
So, I would like to when it, I would like to make this uh, agenda so that we shall adopt 3R, 3A to our agenda. And did all councillors receive the Thank you. Thank you. Yes, real busy. So we got some discussion items. DI one. I'll make that recommendation that council authorize the mayor or alternate to attend the Northeast Roundtable meeting in Fort St. John, BC, November twenty first, two thousand eighteen. <clears throat> all those in favor? Gary. We miss you all. Mr. Mayor? Administration report? Well, first of all, okay. we need to receive your report. Motion to receive your report. You make that. The mayor's report? The C CR1? Uh, CR3 and 3A. Okay. So you would make a motion to receive your report and asks uh, someone to second it. So I will second that report. Let's make that motion then. Okay. That we receive my report, okay. the Red Mayor's report. And I will second that. And then the Administrator's report. Pardon me? You could ask for the, call the question on that if you like. To, on the Mayor's report. Mm -hmm. yeah. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay, carry. Okay. Administration report. Okay, before I carry on with that, uh, we've got uh, discussion item number D1, DI1. We've already moved that. That's okay. So we will yeah. uh, backtrack a little bit and go to CR4, administration, Correct. administrator's report. Yes. I'll second. Yeah. All those in favor? Okay, carry. Okay, we we dealt with uh, item discussion item DI, DI one the round table. Okay, DI two two thousand nineteen BC Natural Resources Form Registration Information. Make that recommendation that council authorize all members of council to attend the BC Natural Resources Forum in Prince George. January 22nd to the 24th of 2019. <clears throat> All those in favor? Gary. Can I just make a note about that? About that? I went to that for the, this um, conference for the last two years and it's highly recommended if you guys are able to go, go. It's probably one of the best conferences there. Are. Just so you know. Correspondence. Letter from District of Tumbler Ridge dated uh, November 8, 2018, Southern Mountain Carrier. Yeah. From C, C1, the one I just stated to C7, is there any counselors that would want to speak on any of these uh, matters from C1 to C7? May I make motion to receive uh, all correspondence? I'll make motion. Second. All those in favor? Gary? Information items. I'd like to, make, like to make the motion to receive all information items. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Carry. Reports for action.
temporary use permit number 02-2018, flight camp and catering. I can make that recommendation that council authorize notice of intent to use issue temporary use permit o number 02-2018 to flight camp and catering incorporated for the purpose of allowing temporary location of 166 person work camp on property located at 4444th Avenue Northeast Chetland um, for a period of up to three years subject to the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure approval. Discussion? Is this in addition to what's already there? Yes, it's right beside the one that's already there. And uh, the, the first one is for 150 and this one is for 166. So the motion is just to ask council for approval to go ahead with the public process. So we'll advertise after this and ask people to uh, attend the next um, council meeting uh, in probably December for public input. Any more discussion? No. Mover? Or oh, second? Correct. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Carry. RA2 2018 Contribution Summary Donation Box at the Sandy Dump Station. I'll make that recommendation that Council authorize administration to distribute the 859.75, which is the total of contributions collected from the donation box at the Sandy Dump Station in 2018 as follows. $286.58 goes to the Shriners Club and 573.17 to the Little Prairie Heritage Museum. Discussion. I would just like to say that some um, and a great amount. I'm surprised we get that much. Like, uh, it's great, considering it's volunteer, right? I think it's great. All those in favor? Carry. RA3 ratification email poll resolution. I'll make that recommendation. I would just like to uh, make a note that the conference uh, workshop has actually changed from November 23rd to November 30th. So if we could capture that in the motion. Yes, we will uh, make that change. I'll make that. That council ratified the resolution adopted by email poll to authorize travel for all members of council to attend the Lidstone and Company elected officials legal orientation on November 30th, 2018 in Vancouver. Second. All those in favor, carry. RA4, District of Chetland Jackets. I would make the motion that this report be received for information. I'll second. Any discussion? Um, I, I, I think it's a good idea that we get jackets. Um, I just think that the cost is the price of the jackets. Like I think if somebody's interested in ordering a jacket, I think that they can order a job, should be able to order a job and just pay for it, but not a reduced rate. Oh, well, I agree, but not at the taxpayer's expense. No. Yes. No. So you would pay for that jacket yourself? Absolutely. Yes, just like we've done in the past. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, uh, being new, Laura, I looked at it and I, uh, I gave this to uh, Carol and she put it in there. And just because when I go somewhere as doing business for my community, I would like them to look and say, this fella or lady is from Chapman. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so that, that was one of the reasons. And yes, taxpayers shouldn't take yeah. take, uh, take it as we're using their money that way. But uh, any advertisement we could do for Chapman would be great. Yeah, no, I agree. I know yeah. when we've gone to UBCM before and we've always said that, you know, it's cool when you see all these communities that have yep. jackets. And yeah, it's like, hey, yeah, we did order jackets, what, a few years ago? Yeah, and we purchased them ourselves. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's, it is nice to have that with our local one. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Then we have to defeat the motion if we want to continue. Okay. So, we are, uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? So, yes, right. Okay. Defeated. 
So I'll make that recommendation that council authorize administration to purchase jackets with the District of Chetland logo for council members at an approximate cost of the full amount. What? Mm. What? Is that? What? So we just defeated the... Yes, to the, for the information, yes. The motion. Oh, well, whatever the jacket you want to pick and whatever cost you want to take. So they're not, they don't have to be the same? As long as I believe that they have their, uh, our logo on it. Okay. I, I believe that because it could be a fall, winter, That's summer. Right. Everyone might want a different coat. <clears throat> what motion's on the floor right now and has it been seconded? Laura's motion, she hasn't been. I just made, we defeated the other receipt for information. Okay. Yeah. And because it was already there before. That we can order jackets from people just pay and order whatever jacket they want. Okay, we need a seconder so we can discuss it. Sorry. Okay, second, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just taking that as that the taxpayer is paying for it. No, uh, Laura made that clear that no. Okay. And so did, so did Rochelle. You're paying the only yeah. Good, good. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> all, all those in favor? I think. <laughs> Clay is buying. Okay, Carrie. RA5, Pedestrian Safety Around Windermill Elementary School. I'll make the recommendation that Council direct the Director of Engineering and Public Works to attend a stakeholder meeting on either November 22nd or December 13th to discuss options to mitigate the risk to students crossing the highway and 46th Street Northeast. I'll second that. Can we get a quick okay. discussion? Quick. Uh, yes, Alex, please. <laughs> question. You're up. You're up. on the safety around the Windrum School. Yeah, we had two email correspondence on November eighth from uh, pack members of all the uh, local schools, just highlighting their concern regarding the uh, the crossings of the highway and Forty Six Street. Where is Forty Six Street? Like I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. North South. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how many items have we had in that area for safety factors just for my benefit? I know we got the crosswalk across the main highway. Yes. From my research, it's been an issue since 1985. There's been various safety measures put in place since then. Uh, the most recent was March of 2016, where we partnered with ICBC and put a uh, illuminated crosswalk signal on 46th Street. So, at the moment, I think all the preventative measures have been put in place. So, I'll meet with the stakeholders on the 15th and the 13th and then go from there. Okay. <clears throat> so, we got a proposal to uh, a motion that we sent. Is there any more discussion? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Another thing, um, the highway crossing here to go up to Don Titus as well. I know there was an accident here, a vehicle hit one of the flashing lights, so it was down completely. I think both areas need to be looked at. Mm -hmm. yeah, so is that part of our uh, motion that we look at that part too, or is that that uh, need to be made yet to deal with this one. It'll be discussed at the stakeholder meeting on the 13th. So. You will bring it back to the council when this is done? For sure. So just for clarification. Just for clarification, that's the Ministry of Transportation that maintains those lights, correct? The crossing walk lights. Crossing the highway, yes. Crossing the highway, yeah. yes. Okay. I, I thought that that was actually us because I brought an issue before when it wasn't working. To Carol and Carol said they have an, we have an agreement with them that we maintain that lights. That's true. Um, Alex is talking about the light that's over by the library, the one that's um, across from A and W. Yeah, right. That one is an anomaly, and actually it, it is district operated. So I believe Alex has ordered new parts for that light, and we're on the list for the Ministry of Transportation to take over and give us an actual permit for that crosswalk. 
Um, we're not sure when that will happen, but we're on their list, so it will happen eventually. That they'll take that over and put in a, a, a proper crossing lane. I'm sorry, this one out here or yes. down to school? The E&W one. The E&W one, okay. Any more discussion? Okay, we're sending Alex, and he's going to report back to us. All those in favor? Okay. Reports of information for the official results of for the official results of the 2018 election. I would make that motion to receive for information. Second, ma'am. All those in favor? Carried. Twelve. Is there any new business? I'm not seeing any. Public questions. Any questions from the public on any of the matters? Not hearing any. I would like to adjourn the meeting. Do I have? I'll make that motion. Make that motion. Yeah. And Clay hurries up and says yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Carry. Okay. Thank you.
was at that point that I guess he talked his older brother into making the trek back across Canada. I'm amazed by the picture. It's just wonderful. It, it just gives you a sort of a nice feeling looking yeah. at it. Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so, Elmer, uh, Elmer Gunderson made this magnificent statue way back in 2011. And it has stood the test of weather and sun and sleet and hail and snow. That tells us something, doesn't it? Oh, we're very sturdy. <laughs> it tells us that our relationship between Chetwin and West Mobile First Nations is enduring. This this gentleman here is here to cement that friendship. Yes. Now, Elmer called it the last hunt. I'm taking the liberty as one of the last acts as mayor of Chetwin <coughs> to change its name. I'm gonna call it the ongoing hunt. Ah, good one. Because the hunt should never end. I mean, it should be successful, but as far as ending, no, this is not the last time. Look, he's youthful. <laughs> and this, this uh, work of art that Elmer Gunderson left in Chetwind now stands here permanently at West Moberly to remind all of us that as we go through life, no matter what the challenges we're facing, the hunt goes on. Anyone else like to say something? Well, the, uh, the, the act of hunting is prosperity, right? You're always providing and moving forward on that. So that, I mean, it's very poignant that this, is, this was the gift to us. Um, we're always forward looking and, and looking at new opportunities and continuing relationships. Um, and the hunt is, that's kind of representative of what the hunt is, you know, and you continue on. I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed at how striking of a resemblance it is to me when I was this age. <laughs> when you were his age? <laughs> when I was his age. <laughs> so anyways, thank you very much for it. Um, this is a temporary uh, site for this. It will be permanently hosted here, but we are going to, once we finish our health center, uh, we're going to put this individual at, at the front of our health center so that when people come into the new building, they'll see this. It'll be one of the first things that they see. So, um, thank you again. Yes. Thank you. Mayor and Council, thank you.
Congratulations, Dana. <laughs>
remember all the places we used to go. But little darling, they're not there anymore. So just remember me. I'll remember. 